So let's get back to why the roots are the most important part of a tree. Conceivably, this is where the tree equivalent of a brain is located. Brain, you ask? Isn't that a bit far-fetched? Possibly, but now we know that trees can learn. This means they must store experiences somewhere, and therefore there must be some kind of storage mechanism inside the organism. Just where it is, no one knows, but the roots are the part of the trees best suited to the task. The old spruce in Sweden also shows that what grows underground is the most permanent part of the tree. And where else would it store important information over a long period of time? Moreover, current research shows that a tree's delicate root network is full of surprises. It is now an accepted fact that the root network is in charge of all chemical activity in the tree. And there's nothing earth shattering about that. Many of our internal processes are also regulated by chemical messengers. Roots absorb substances and bring them into the tree. In the other direction, they deliver the products of photosynthesis to the tree's fungal partners and even route warning signals to neighboring trees. But a brain? For there to be something we would recognize as a brain, neurological processes must be involved. And for these, in addition to chemical messages, you need electrical impulses. And these are precisely what we can measure in the tree. And we've been able to do so since as far back as the 19th century. For some years now, a heated controversy has flared up among scientists. Can plants think? Are they intelligent? In conjunction with his colleagues, Frantiesk Beluska from the Institute of Cellular and Molecular Botany at the University of Bonn is of the opinion that brain-like structures can be found at root tips. In addition to signaling pathways, there are also numerous systems and molecules similar to those found in animals. When a root feels its way forward in the ground, it is aware of stimuli. The researchers measured electrical signals that led to the changes in behaviors after they were processed in a transition zone. If the root encounters toxic substances, impenetrable stones, or saturated soils, it analyzes the situation and transmits the necessary adjustments to the growing tips. The root tips changes direction as a result of this communication and steers the growing roots around the critical areas. Right now, the majority of plant researchers are skeptical about whether such behaviors point to a repository for intelligence. The faculty of memory and emotions, among other things, they get worked up about carrying over findings in similar situations with animals and, at the end of the day, about how this threatens to blur the boundary between plants and animals. And so what? What would be so awful about that? The distinction between plants and animals is, after all, arbitrary and depends on the way an organism feeds itself. The former photosynthesizes and the latter eats other living beings. Finally, the other big difference is in the amount of time it takes to process information and translate it into action. Does that mean that beings that live life in the slow lane are automatically worth less than ones on the fast track? Sometimes I suspect we would pay more attention to trees and other vegetation if we could establish beyond a doubt just how similar they are in many ways to animals.